So about a week ago, I did a review on the Final Fantasy VII Remake game. And overall, I enjoyed the game even though there was lots of things that could have made the game better. But like I said in my review, nostalgia actually got the better of me. I know, it's a bit like Angelina Jolie. There's something not quite right, but you know you still would. Well, I would anyway. Uh, but I thought to myself, I can't be the only one. So I did a post on Reddit and I asked for people's thoughts what they thought could have made the game better. And that's what we're going to discuss again today. This time it's your reasons why you think the game could have been made better. So before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't hit, forget to hit the like button. Also share with your friends and all the other Facebook groups and stuff. Get the word out. Also, there's a link to the Reddit post in the description below. So come and join in the chat. Give your opinions as well. So before I get started, what I am going to do, because these aren't my opinions, I am going to put down here a little box saying whether I agree or disagree. That's what I'm going to do. Other than that, you'll see the comments in the box here. And behind me, obviously, I've got me playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, because obviously I have played it, I have completed it. I'm also doing this slightly differently. I have, this week, printed everyone's things off, so I know what everyone said. So, we're going to start off with one from Johnny Rico, who says, Just let me heal from the menu, please. I hate that I have to press X, choose item, choose option, choose character multiple times. Um, yes and no, I can see where... The he's coming from on that uh it worked in 15 but yeah there was something a little bit off with this version so yeah agree uh this time it's from hell poptomopsis i think oh sorry if i said your name wrong so if you press l1 while doing it the box for the item stroke healing will stay open for multi-use so you don't have to keep reopening agreed when I found that out, oh my god, that made it so much easier. And what she means is, while you're actually in the menu, if you keep your finger on the L1 button, it doesn't actually disappear every time you want to, after you've done a selection. So, from waiting to be triggered, face the lead. Don't get that one. I'm not going to rank that one. All right, next one, we've got a few from someone called Turtle Quick. Hey, I watched the video and I think you've hit upon a lot of the cool gropes people are likely to have with, had had with this game, but I've got something small which adds up to share. Here we go. The party AI is not good and your options to customise their priorities are totally non-existent. For example, if you are Cloud trying to fight the shock troopers with turrets in the background, Barrett will not see his tool sets as a priority to deal with a long range enemy. Instead, you need to assume direct control and do that all the while you need to hope that your team does, doesn't switch to your new long range target. Often one, when you jump back to, you could lose 1000 HP from the whole mess. Even without the most basic AI setup, if you, when you hit R1, or sorry, R2, L2, the first choice was attack, you could designate the target, it would resolve that issue. Actually, yeah, he's got a point. Uh, the AI wasn't actually that good. So, yeah, agreed. Uh, additionally, you have to use the material slot in the game to teach your allies how to heal someone if someone is low on health. There should be something they surely do for free. I am going to disagree. The reason being there is one saying auto-cure. Equip that to one of your characters and they will cure themselves. Granted, there's only one. Obviously, when you do a second playthrough, you should be able to get the second one. So you can actually sort that out. It's there. There is a workaround. So yeah, I'm disagreeing with that one. Sorry, Turtle Quick. In a, it's stark compared to Final Fantasy 15, where GLaDOS or Ignos would often take a hit for you and disrupt your target. Felt natural and like they were helping, not hindering. Yeah, I agree. I love Final Fantasy 15. I thought that was a really good game. There were some flaws with it, but ultimately it was a good game. They should have copied more from 15 from the, to, uh, onto 7. Right, next couple of points is from I Counter Nonsense. Why are you commenting on my post? I, I talk nonsense all the time. Check out my film reviews. Anyway, some battles take too long. I don't really understand the complaints that the ATB combat system is slow and outdated when the combat is so much faster than the original. I'm going to disagree because some of the combats in the original did take forever. I mean, I remember fighting Sephiroth the first time. I spent five hours, and I still didn't kill him. Five hours to beat one boss. Even in 15, you've got the Adamos. It was designed to take 24 hours. Granted, it took me about three, but that's the beauty of the Final Fantasy games, especially towards the end. 
a lot of these bosses take a long time. You have to take a step back, think tactically. Yeah, long fight bosses. It's a part of the parcel of Final Fantasy, so I'm disagreeing with that one. So, next one from him. Some sections are too long and drag on. Section Sector 5 infiltration and Hojo's lab were the worst. Yeah, the whole lamp thing was just too long, so agree. ATP charge is being used up if you are interrupted. This is particularly horrible if you cast magic where the MP is still used, even if you haven't cast a spell yet. Agreed. Uh, I mean, I think out of everything I've seen on other forums and stuff, that is one of the biggest complaints this game has actually got. Uh, sometimes I felt like I was watching the game more than playing it, lots of wasting around. Nice that you can skip cut scenes, but the load times suck. Once again, agreed. In fact, I have something I actually picked up on my re review video, so go and check that one out, because some of these issues may be on there, but that was something that I did pick on there. 30 hours to play the game, and only about five, 10 hours of it was actually me playing the game. So, yep. Sections where you have to crouch and walk onto something, or squeeze between something to get by are painfully slow and annoying. Agreed, especially as they did use that mechanic in 15, but it worked so much better. And also the fact that you could jump in 15 as well. At times there was too much happening on screen and information overload, if you will. Mm. Sorry, I'm disagreeing with that. I don't actually recall that. So sorry, I disagree with you on that one, I'm afraid. Uh, overall, he enjoyed the game and it was a lot more awesome stuff that I wish was in the original, but this remake made me appreciate the original that much more. It was just so efficient and respectful of the player's time. You know what? That hasn't agreed. Right, next lot is all coming from the Root Inverse. I liked the combat and the fillers and so on. Hated the Sephiroth fan service. Agreed. The Whispers, Fate and the big plot changes. Agreed. Also, the deaths that got changed. Avalanche and the President and maybe even Zack. Agreed. In fact, I actually did pick that one up on my video as well. So, but he has put a list of nitpicks. Now, I like nitpicking. That's just me, so I'm going to enjoy all this. Just hope I agree with them all. Easier swapping multiple materials between members. I didn't have that much of an issue swapping my material, I'm afraid. So, disagree. Drop the fancy graphical updates menu for weapons. The concept was great, but uh, what a mess. Once you get into it, no, it wasn't. I... Sorry, I'm disagreeing with that one as well. I liked, I didn't mind the whole upgrade system actually. It brought back a bit more like te how 10 was with their orbs and spheres. So, a bit more influence on the characters you don't control during combat. Don't need a full gambit system since it's made its way for us to swap between them. But at least do a more blocking attack and fill the ATB. It goes too slow in certain situations. Also, the characters are awful at staying in the walls or cover, going for cover at times. Agreed. Yeah. Spot on on that one, can't argue. I want an easier way to see what enemy skills I've learned, like it is in the OG. Agreed, it was, you go into your ability list and that list was just so long. So yep, yeah, agreed. There weren't enough materia to have full complete loadouts, which resulted in too much swapping in the Shinra building. You only need three complete loadouts because you can only have a maximum of three people in your party. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Disagreeing, there's, there's workarounds on that one. It felt bad when phase changes during boss battles made you do stagger, limits, ATP and MP just be committed before the change. I can see arguments for why to do it like that, but it wasn't a good experience. I'm agreeing with that one. Like, second playthrough, fighting Hell House. I built up my limit, I hit the limit button. Changed phase, I lost it. Oh, so yeah, I'm agreeing with that one. That was, no, next. Some of the music tracks didn't fit in. Collapsed Expressway and Jim, I'm looking at you. The more the OG music shown later, the better. Those tracks were straight out of Final Fantasy XIII. Yes, I can see your point. And yes, there was sometimes the music didn't fit the stage like they did in the original. So, yep, I'm hitting the agree button on that one. Some of the quests were a bit boring, but I get they were for you and to get to you know the characters, environment and so on could be better. Oh, hell yes. Those quests were just annoying. Co-op battle in the arena, that would be awesome. Oh yes, definitely. That would be actually really awesome to think to do, actually. Um, I 
To my knowledge, I have not seen anything about a multiplayer expansion coming. If there are, or if you know about that, say in the comments below, but I personally am not aware of that. That would be a cool concept though. Books to read in the Shinra library. I'm on the fence. I don't know. Do you know what? I'm gonna put agree and a disagree because I'm just too much in the fence on that one. More law and information in the Shinra Museum. Yeah, same again, both. Show more from the other se sectors. I'm actually going to agree, because it would have opened up more like a open world game like it should have been, like you could go off exploring. That was something this game was missing, the linearness. Putting the other sectors in would have actually opened it up. So yeah, I'm hitting the agree on that one. A complete map showing all the places you have been in relation to each other. The areas felt a bit isolated now. Yes, I'll agree with that one as well. Some of the textures. Yep, some of the texturing in the game was not quite right. Um, I've said that in my review video, I personally felt the graphics were more on par with 13 rather than 15. So yeah, agreeing on that one. So that was all from them. So thank you very much. So W. Joe got quite a lot of fact. The rest of this paper is literally all from W. Joe. So here we go. The section of the story that could have probably been done with five to 10 hours shorter, obviously that would have made it difficult as part of the Final Fantasy VII series they're going to set. Make it shorter than people would have complained about 30 hour game or make it longer to cover a longer section of the original, which would have felt disjointed and would have taken a lot more development work. There are a few chapters that drag on rerun previous sections, e.g. the highway and sewers, and they just generally aren't as polished as cinematic compared to other uh, earlier chapters. I'm agreeing. In fact, I think I said the same sort of thing in my review video, so yeah, I agree with that one. The combat system could use a few minor improvements, though generally I really like it. Camera improvements are the most obvious. Usually when I switch characters, I find myself looking away from the enemy. Less of a penalty for interruptions, losing your ATB item limit is a pain, and sometimes it is impossible to predict when something will interrupt you. Only losing half an ATB might be good to compromise, or just being unable to form the action for a second after being interrupted. See, I'm liking this. Uh, I, you can have an agree on that, but I also like the fact that you are coming up with solutions to these problems. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for that one. Some of the fights are a little too fast and frantic. I enjoyed one and two personal fights, the most since it made you slow down and think about things, while in three person fights or big fights against bosses or multiple enemies. I'm constantly trying to switch around, block, dodge, stay healed up, and can't really concentrate on strategy. I'm not really sure how this could be improved, but some of the tweaks could make it feel better. <sighs> yes and no. I agree with some of the points, I disagree with some of the points. A lot of the times when you've got multiple people, they are weak enemies, so it is literally hack slash, hack slash, hack slash. I mean, nine times out of 10, if you've got like four or five uh, bosses, the uh, triple slash uh, ability from Cloud, bang, 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 three of them gone. So I actually enjoyed that. So that's why I'm going to give you a disagree. But yes, I do agree when you have a lot of people with on the boss people, it's harder to control, especially when you're fighting one powerful enemy and you can't get all of your characters to do what you want. So I'm giving you an agree for that bit as well. Quick reload. Having to wait for a minute of loading screens to load exactly the same area enemies after failing in a difficult fight or mini game is a real pain. It's probably an engine limitation that can't be fixed but I'd be a lot willing, more willing to persevere with hard mode if I didn't have to wait so long to, between the attempts. Yeah, got that one. Unfortunately, load time, especially ever since it's gone over to like the digital formats, uh, you would have thought loading times would have some issue. I mean, go back to like the Genesis and Master System. Granted, the graphics were never that good, but obviously the system limitations were there, but there was never load times, ever. So. Personally, I'd have preferred if half mode didn't limit item usage and MP restoration. They focus more on making a harder end game and super bosses that kept the same rules. That said, it does present a good challenge and perhaps more of a balanced way of doing things than just making enemies stronger. I am going to agree. Now, to a certain extent, take the item section away during battles. Great. In between battles, then you should be able to use your items to like heal yourself. There should be a 50 more of a gap, but ultimately I do agree. So you can have the agree button there. I'm generally okay with the ending. 
but it was a bit jarring. Suddenly going from fighting people and robots and trying to stop an evil corporation to fighting gods, destiny, fate, whatever it is. I'm not sure exactly how it could have been improved since doing more with these plot elements early in the game would have probably annoyed people too. But it just felt out of place at the end of the game. I am disagreeing with you. On the pure basis, I hated the ending of this game. That being said, your other point is that it's not there. It was. It was subtle. All the way through the game, you had these whispers trying to keep the characters on the original story. So it was there. And Red 13 actually said that towards the end. So it did explain. But yeah, literally from the moment you first met Eric, it's there. The reason being. Also, the three whispers you fight at the end of the game are actually Barrett, Cloud, and and Tifa. Think about it. One has a gun, one does melee attacks, one has a sword. The three whispers at the end are your main characters. You are doing mirror fights. You have to think about it. So yeah, you're getting a big disagree on that one, I'm afraid. It's still a 9 out of 10 game for me, and none of these things were massive deal breakers for me. It's also good to see that most people agree on things that could be improved in the game, so hopefully Square Enix is paying attention and improves these elements in part 2. Well, I can tell you now, they're not going to watch this video. I'm way too small for Square Enix to give a damn what I think. Uh, but ultimately, with that last statement, you are getting an agree on that one. So, so who, we're moving on, and who do we have next? Deliza. I think that's how you say the name. So, what do they say? I love the remake, but there were a few, few things I wish they had fixed, or at least to fix moving forward. Some of the new extended areas were really interesting, like the underground Shinra research facility. I think you're the only person I like that. But some of them just went on way too long and obvious filler. Hojo's lab, the wall market sewers, and the underplay area where you had to turn off all the lamps. Don't get me started on that lamp section. All stand out as places that were need, needlessly tedious. Oh, and the part where Tifa had to claim handrails and jump across the lamps. It wasn't hard, but it was unnecessary because you can jump 33 in the air to punch a dragon, but suddenly she can't hope, hop over a 10 foot high reception desk. I get the point that it was trying to pick up a final weapon, but they could have put it somewhere else, not Dulles with a dull puzzle to get a key card. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. The highway sections had worse control than the originals, in my opinion. Okay. Also, it wasn't clear how to the long range attack at a glance. Okay, yeah, that bit I do sort of agree, so you can have to agree on that one. It took me long, way too long to figure it out because the button explanation in the corner said L1, but I didn't see the special ability change when L1 was held down. So it'd be just hitting L1 and nothing happened, but there was too much happening on screen to notice the command change at first. Someone I watched on Twitch didn't even know about it until the fight with the motorball. You've already had the agree, and yes, I do agree with that part, but ultimately, I am going to give you a disagree because I actually enjoyed the minigame. I thought it was pretty much the same as it was the same controllers as the original, so sorry. Speaking of, fighting the multiple on this motorcycle was completely awful. The camera angles were skewed, so I couldn't always tell whether I was close enough to actually hit it. It was also super annoying that we knew for a fact that Red 13 can cast Cure from the truck, but only when he feels like it, which is to say in between sections. Also, I never figured out why exactly Aerith does when she says this should make you feel stronger, but it definitely isn't healing or casting barrier. Now, I know the, the fight, it will be fine in future playthroughs, but the first time was a complete miserable experience. Yep. Yeah, I actually found a trick uh, fighting multiple. Stay well back and just get, wait for your uh, long range attacks to boost up and do it that way. It's, it's an easy fight, but it's a longer way. Yes, if you go up and attack, close range he attacks you more um, but yeah play it safe just stay back and just do long range attacks every single time being interrupted when using an ability or item kind of sucks and it's even worse than that it wastes your ATB that seems to be a really reoccurring theme in this video especially when it can be a matter of life and death because your healing was denied and you have no ATB straight away the final battle was simply awesome and heart pumping that being said it also felt really bad to so use a limit break and hit one of Sephiroth's HP thresholds at the same time and then the fight goes in cinematic mode and then your limit break is lost either. I'm pretty sure we've already said this so you're getting an agree as well. The mini map isn't very good and the compass is just so bad I didn't use it. Location icons aren't always reliable because they might show the entrance to sector 5 instead of where you need to go. Final Fantasy 15's mini grab was great and I don't really know why they just didn't reuse it here. In fact, there was a lot of things they could have uh, taken from 15 to put here, so you'll get an agree as well. 
So thank you very much to Elisa, that was all your points. And now we're moving on to Skinny Dan 85 If you were born in 85, I'm still older than you. I legit thought I sucked at the lamp jumping part. I actually made a comment about how if I didn't fall, I have never found the weapon. Didn't realize it was on purpose. I must admit, I agree, I thought the same thing. So you can have an agree. I lost count of the amount of times I built up a limit break in a boss fight, finally get the stagger, and as soon as I commit to the limit, the phase change and lose it. You'd think I would have learned by the time I got to Sephiroth, but nope, same thing happened in the spot you're referring to. God, that was annoying. I agree with that as well, so yeah, you can have an agree on that one as well. So thank you very much for your points. We are now moving on to Memorio. Memorio? I think that's how you say you know. I get why they do the false walking and such. Better than loading screens. That being said, the game would have been better without it. Hmm. Yeah, you can have to agree. There's arguments on both sides of that. And go for it. Oh. I like it's how I get to keep my cardio by staying in shape. It'd be way cooler if I didn't have to do it that way. Yeah, you agree with me. I'm fat. I'm overweight. I'm really unfit. So, yeah. Got to agree with that one. How pop up to us? Again? More? Okay. I'll just make a list. Completely rework or remove the filler chapter with turning the lamps off before the second reactor run. Hell yes. Chapter 13, where you revisit Sector 7, make absolutely no sense and start of narrative issues with the changes they've made. Sector 7 has an entire plate form in it, yet when you go there, it's this mold debris. Oh, and Wedge is magically alright. Then when you climb up the wall out of Wall Market, you're made to look at giant flaming wreckage of the plate fell despite literally walking down there and there's less damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can have an agree on that one. No arguments for me. Combat was o good overall in my opinion. I think you're going to get a lot of disagreements on that one. But they did lean heavily into your opponents being able to interrupt everything you do to scale up the difficulty. The late game stuff comes more around tanking stuff, which will not just knock your characters around and have the others heal them rather than making you feel like you can interact with counter or play around it. It's hard to balance that, and I had a good time with it. Yeah, you can have, you can have an agree on that one. As mentioned in here already, the full slowdown and not being able to explore areas, I imagine a lot of the, if it was technical related to, you, to how great the world looked, but still definitely frequent enough to be a drag of time. I'm disagreeing. You can have a disagree. Go back and look at a 15. There was more in-depth uh, dungeons. It was a bigger world. And the graphics were better, and that was on 15, which came out before this. So, no, it's not a technical difficulty. I don't know why they've done it this way. I think they're just trying to milk us with as much cash. But yeah, sorry, you're getting a no on that one. Sorry, because you've made good points so far. The overall decision to lighten a lot of the serious moments, your bombs fail to shimmer on the band guys who blew it up. You have a mass evacuation of the sun, so all the NPCs survive. The Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse are hinted shown to be alive at or at worst now ambiguous, the whole Zack thing as well, the repercussions and weights of the events are now much lower. In my opinion, the lower and the stakes really impact out the key events and make it mean less. Yes, in fact, that was something I did pick up in my review video, so you can have an agree on that one. So next, we're back to W. Joe. He had a lot to say on this one. So completely rework or remove the filler chapter was turning the lamps off before the second reactor run. Yep. In fact, I think that's been quite a common thing throughout this video. I find it interesting that this is one of the most complained about sections, while many people also complain about the game's linearness. This is one of the few areas that had optional paths, backtracking, and missable item pack. Not really. It wasn't that big. There wasn't multiple things you couldn't get lost. Yes, it had multiple tracks, but they didn't go that far. So, no, you can have a disagree on that one, I'm afraid. Do you think it could have been improved with better design, or was it the non-linear design, or was it more being out of place in the story? Well, the story wasn't out of place until the last chapter, so go watch the review video. It, my feelings are made quite clear on that one. Uh, oh, we're back to Deliza. To be fair, they did show the plate fell at an angle and didn't completely fall flat on the sums. Cloud, Tifa and Barrett climbed it to get topside after all. The Sector 7 slums, at least the part of it we ran around in, seemed to be right on the edge, but it did seem oddly intact given the level of destruction we saw on top of the plate. But more people lived there and had actual buildings to live rather than work in the shacks made from scrap metal. Yeah, I sort of agree with that one. Also, the thing with Shinra blowing the home reactor was set up in the original, but I think the overall 
plot point was cut. Jesse mentioned the, uh, the explosion shouldn't have been that big and she blamed herself for messing up the barn and no one mentioned it again, mentioned again. Zack surviving his last hand was shown to happen in a different timeline, so we don't know what it means for the main timeline, but the events that already happened there are still important to people living it. <sighs> Disagree. Uh, you did see the whispers from the game being shown in Zack's time as well, so there is something going on. Now, a lot of those issues will be taken up in the sequel if and when we get them. So, I don't like how it's been ended, but we will find out in the sequel, I hope. There you go. There's the scores. Do you agree with them? Is there any points that you have? Leave them in the comments below or come join the Reddit uh, post as well. Come have a chat with us on there. But thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.